Man. God's good. Great faith. Great faith. Great faith. Great faith. We can just put the uh, put that in the player and just play that. Great faith. No, we want a new one. Oh, you want a new one? Then you can't sit there. I uh, can't sit there. Yeah. I have enjoyed being here this week. We just tell him to go sit over there. Yes. <laughs> we abuse him. Yeah, Poor baby. <laughs> I have enjoyed being here this week, and I, 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 I trust that we've been able to deposit something in you. Oh, amen. Uh, yeah. That uh, uh, you can carry on. Allow it to put muscle on your spiritual bones and uh, be able to come out victoriously in every situation that you're in. I trust it that uh, that the Lord's been able to use us to do that. Uh, I I have a few uh, CDs uh, and DVDs left back there. If uh, you don't have any of those, you can get any three of the CDs. They're normally five dollars a piece, but you can get any three for ten dollars tonight. And I still got those five little booklets that I mentioned the other night. Uh, those are three dollars a piece, but you can get all five of those for ten, and so I don't have to carry that stuff home with me. Uh, that's uh, all my product sales. Uh, is that's how we pay some of our. Uh, that's how we keep getting products. We use the money for that, and then that's how I pay my son because he does all that work. And uh, uh, I told him the other day. I said, "This is right." I said, "You're you're home, and you're getting paid." There's something wrong with this picture, uh, but uh, wow, yeah, and, and he just laughed, just like you guys just did, he just laughed, he thought that was funny. If you have your Bible, go with me to the book of Joshua, chapter number three, Joshua chapter number three. I was thinking on Sister Daisy said that a while ago about saying stuff and looking foolish or sounding stupid, and I do that continuously, so uh, uh, I just... I just go on, you know, like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but you just don't pay the that's 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 true. That's true. But my mind kind of runs kind of crazy and silly anyway. You know, I I I, I think of, I, I I think of stuff. You know, that's people say things like stand to your feet. Well, what else would you stand to? <laughs> and really, it's not stand to your feet. It stand on your feet. See, we say we say stuff, and and I, I like I like to, of course you know I've mentioned this before I like to do the long list of oxymorons you know the, the, like tight fitting slacks that can't be there's no such thing it can't be slack and tight fitting at the same time there's no way there's no way it can't be it can't be a small fortune that, that's no such thing I mean you know unless you're Comparing a millionaire to a billionaire, I guess, but just things like that. You know, I, I uh, my mind runs that way. So uh, maybe that's why I just am the way that I am, I guess. I don't know, but to, I have a good time anyhow. <clears throat> and, and, and I like to challenge people, if you've not noticed that. I like to say things to get you to study and look at the Word and, and, and see what the Word says. Um... And I'm going to tell you something, and you'll, you'll find this out if you've not found it out already. When someone comes around and gives you a passage of Scripture, and look, and you look at it, if you don't throw away what you think it says, then no matter what you get out of it, you'll still think it says what you think it says. Unless you really let it say to you what it says. That's right. Huh? Now that yeah. people say, what? What? What did you say? What? You say? what? <laughs> That's like the other night I may mention about this. And we did this just to, for, for revelation in the Word. We, we did the thing about Luke chapter 6. Uh -huh. Verse 38. Given, uh -huh. shall be given, shaken down. Press down, shaken together. And, and, I, and I said, read that passage of Scripture. It has nothing to do with money. Uh -huh. huh? And several of you came back and told me, said, I read that, but I can see it both ways. You can't see it both ways. Because it doesn't say anything about that. But there is a principle that is there about giving. But the context is forgiveness. So now, if you were having that conversation with Jesus, 
You couldn't walk away and said, oh, he told me to go give some money. Because that's not what he said to do. He said, go and give forgiveness. Now, y'all are looking at me strange. You see? But if we don't throw away some of the old teachings that we've had, you'll never see what the Word actually is saying. And it's important. You say, well, why is that so important? Because uh, if you take something out of context, I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't be foolish and say, well, the, the Bible says... Uh, uh, Eye for an eye and tooth for I mean, you can't go very well and do that now, can you? You can't do that. That's Old Testament stuff. You can't. That stuff's abolished. Or, or, or if you're going to take things out of context, you can do this. You can read the scripture where it says Jesus went out and or Judas went out and hanged himself, and take another scripture where it says, "Go and do that likewise." Yeah. <laughs> now you see the importance of it, right? Let me give you another importance of it. It, without keeping things in context, Jim Joneses are birthed. David Koresh's are birthed. Without keeping things in context. That's why it is so critical uh, to do that. Uh, and and uh, I just, maybe that's the teacher in me, but uh, I love doing that. And I love seeing people's faces when they go, huh? I just love that. I love that. I love that. Then I like to see their faces when they came back and they read it and went, Joshua chapter 3. <laughs> I'm not going to try. I'm going to try not to keep you too long tonight because I got a long drive ahead of me tonight. Uh, be praying for us. Beginning at Joshua, beginning at verse number one, uh, Joshua three, verse one. And Joshua rose early in the morning and removed from Sidon and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests of the Levites bearing it, uh, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I pray that you'll lead us into uh, revelation knowledge. I pray, God, that your word uh, will be declared into our ears and our minds and our hearts tonight, God, and it'll conform in us the image of Jesus Christ. I ask, God, that you touch everyone that's here tonight, whether it be mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, whatever it may be, that when they leave here tonight, their need is met, and you receive all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And amen. I, I, uh, uh, I want to take for a thought tonight, expanding your horizons. I, I really believe that no matter how far we are in God now, that God is wanting to take us even further. Amen. I, I really believe that, that, that the in-depth that we have in God right now is not yet as deep as He wants us to go. Amen. It's not as yet as wide as He wants us to go. It's not yet as high as He wants us to reach. There's, there's horizons that we've not yet tapped into uh, that, that God wants us to tap into. Israel was getting ready to go into a place where she had never been before except Joshua and Caleb. And, and, and Joshua says something very critical here. He says a lot of critical, critical things. But one of the critical things here, he told them to sanctify themselves. And, 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 and when you, when you uh, uh, look the word sanctify, it does, not only does it mean cleanse, but it also means separate. And, and, and one of the things that Joshua was telling them to do was this. You're going to have to cleanse your minds and separate yourself from some negative thinking in order to get what this land's got for you. Because when you get into this land, it'll take you by surprise if you're not careful. Because a lot of times we think that God will lead us into blessings and it's going to be a bed of roses. But I found out that every blessing God's ever led me into, there was a fight involved with the blessing. Uh -huh. Amen. Not fighting the blessing. But fighting the one standing between me and the blessing. Amen. Or fighting the one standing around the blessing. Amen. Not wanting you to get the blessing. Amen. And how we know the land of Canaan. We used to sing that song on camping on camping in Canaan's happy land. Canaan's land was not a happy place. It was filled with, with, with uh, 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 armies and, and soldiers and giants. And, and, and people that had lived there and established themselves. Matter of fact, it was so much so that God told Israel, I will only run them out and drive them out little by little. Because he said, if I drive them all out at once, you won't know how to handle the land. That's, right. Right. That's why in your own personal life, God drives things out little by little. 
So you can handle it little by little. Because the little bit he takes away, the little bit he delivers you from, and the little bit that that, that, that he uh, uh, separates you from, uh, you get used to that. So now he can separate you from something else. Can you say amen? But God expects us, I believe, to expand our horizons. Yes. If you notice, he said, the Ark of the Covenant is going to come by your way. And he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get up and remove yourself from your place. Right. Everybody say, remove yourself. Remove yourself. From your place. From your place. Now, what that means is you can't continue staying where you're staying That's right. and, 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 and get higher in God. It, right. It's not going to happen. Right. I'm not talking about a geographical location. So don't run out of here and say, well... I've been praying about, the, about leaving the church, so Dr. Wallock said I could go. I didn't say that. <laughs> don't, don't put words in my mouth. I'm not talking about geographical location. I'm talking about spiritual things now. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Uh, uh, and he said, you, you, you don't get too close to it. Now watch this. In other words, he said, don't get too familiar with it. Because you'll get so familiar with it, you won't know where to go. Yeah. Because you've never went this way before. That's why I said what I did a while ago about throwing things out that we've been, been taught before. Uh, not everything we've been taught is wrong, but we've been taught some stuff that's not right. Uh -huh. and, and when you read the Bible, you cannot read it and study it to defend what you believe, but you got to read it and study it to let God say to you yeah. what He's saying to you. Yeah. And if you yeah. do it that way, yeah. you'll know which way to go. Yeah. But if you do it your way, you'll never know which way to go. Amen. Right. You'll end up going the Baptist way or the Pentecostal way. Uh -huh. You'll end up going the Methodist way, the Nazarene way. Uh -huh. You'll end up going the Trinitarian way, whatever that is. The oneness way, whatever that is. Uh, you'll end up going all kinds of different ways based on your opinions and your ideas uh -huh. and what you see there. Because how many times have you heard people say this? Well, the word's written so you got one interpretation and I get another. No, hold on. That's not true. I know a lot of folk like to believe that. But it's not true. People say, well, you understand it your way and I understand it. No, 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 no. That's not true either. There's only one word. There's only one faith. There's only one God. There's only one baptism. Come on, someone say amen. There's only one door. There's only one hell. There's only one heaven. There's only one Savior. And His name is Jesus Christ. There's only one blood that gets the job done. There was only one cross that got the job done. There was only one grave that split open that got the job done. How many? There's only one way. Mm. And we can't confuse the way. Amen. But every lot, think about this for a moment. Every time the Word of God is proclaimed, whether it be preaching, teaching, singing, whatever, every time it's proclaimed, the Word of God demands an action from each and every one of us. Amen. It demands movement. Uh -huh. Everybody say movement. movement. See, the, 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 the Word of God is not a sit-still word. <laughs> I said it's not a sit-still word. It causes movement. It causes you to move. It causes you to take action. See, and every time the word's proclaimed to you, whether you realize it or not, a demand is put on you to start conforming to what you just heard and become what that word just said. It, de it demands an action. The word, the word is designed to deliver you and I from our flesh, from our mindsets, from our traditions, from our cultures, hallelujah, and put us into a heavenly culture. It's designed so. Now, when that happens... The word will cause us to go into places that are unknown to us. Amen. Yes. Amen. Those are places that are uncomfortable. Uh -huh. right. About everybody I know likes to stay in a comfortable place. Sure. Yeah, huh? zone. Just, just yeah, a comfort zone. You like to like to be comfortable, like to know everything's all right. Yeah. But the word, of the, the word of God will demand you to go into unknown territory. Yeah, I call it crossing the line of the unknown. Yeah. Wow. The, the little woman at, at Zarephath, she crossed the line of the unknown. Amen. The man of God came. Now, now, now think about this for a moment. She had never saw she had never seen Elijah. Mm -hmm. Elijah had never seen her. Now think about this for a minute. There's, there's, some, there's, some, there's some spiritual significance to this move of Elijah. Elijah was at the brook of Cherith, right? Yes. Yeah. He was fed by the ravens. Is that correct? Yes. And he stayed there till the brook dried up and the ravens quit feeding him. Now watch this. There's something strange about this because ravens don't eat fresh meat. No, that's right. Yeah. They they don't eat fresh meat. No, they, they don't. eat roadkill. Yes, they do. That's right. Yeah. Eat dead stuff. Eat dead stuff. 
and and they were bringing Elijah dead stuff. Yeah. <laughs> stuff that stinketh. <laughs> Come on. Right. Why? Why? And what does that signify? It signifies the feeding of the flesh. But watch this. God told Elijah that I've got I've got a lady at Zarephath, and I'm paraphrasing, and you go there, and I've already spoke to her, and she shall sustain you. Uh -huh. Upon further research, I found out God said to Elijah, go there to Zarephath, and I have a lady there who will feed you and sustain you spiritually. Uh -huh. The raven sustained him physically. You ain't getting this. The raven sustained him physically, fleshly, but the widow was going to sustain him spiritually, getting him ready for a spiritual battle that was going to take place on Mount Carmel. Hallelujah! Uh -huh. Now, she was faced with movement or lack thereof. Uh -huh. Here came Elijah. Now, 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 it had not rained for three and a half years. The brook had dried up, so he had no place to take a bath. Amen. <laughs> so he had to be a pretty stinking mess yeah. by the time he got to Zarephath. Yeah, right Think out. about it. Right. Right. Yeah. Huh? Right. And yeah. Right. And I don't, I don't think they had dial back then. No. <laughs> so or la lava or lice, they may, I don't know they may have had some lice so. one time when I was in the service we gave, we gave an old boy a, uh, a, a, a GI, bath. GI bath with lice soap and steel brushes oh my God. yeah we did too he had not showered for three weeks and he stinketh oh my. <laughs> platoon sergeant said go get him yeah, told me and two other boys said go get him bring him down here to the latrine now for you that don't know what the latrine is that's the restroom yeah. why they call it a restroom I don't know but anyhow <laughs> we got him down he wasn't going to go I'll never forget him I'll never forget this kid he wasn't, he wasn't going to go no we, we said well you got to go us three guys got him and carried him down there Man, we put him in that shower and got that lice open him. Steel, I'm talking about steel brushes. Oh my. His skin was bleeding, but I'll tell you what, he showered after that. But now he, he, he showered on his own. So you know Elijah, Elijah probably was not what the widow was expecting. Wonder how many times God has sent something our way and we didn't recognize it because that's not what we were expecting. Huh? I, years and years ago, I was preaching, getting ready to preach a meeting in, in, in Tallahassee, Florida. And uh, uh, a lady pastor had came to, to, to the meeting. And, and uh, 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 matter of fact, I'm still friends with her today. She still pastors a church in Mariana, Florida. And, and, uh, and she told me after the service, she said, when I looked up and saw you sitting on the platform, and they said that, you're, that someone told me that that was the preacher, she said, I looked at you and said, there ain't no way that man can preach. <laughs> he don't look like a preacher. Ain't nothing. And I looked at her and I said, "Well, as she told me that, I said, well, uh, honey, what does a preacher look like?" Uh -huh. I, I don't know. They come in all shapes and sizes and colors. So what does one look like? Huh? So the only thing that the widow had had to go on at Zarephath was Elijah's word. Come on. God had already dealt with her now. Yeah. Now watch this. you got to watch when folk call you out and give you a word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because that word should be a word of confirmation. Amen. It should already be something that God's dealing with you about or has dealt with you about. And then God will pull you out. And God give, God, God will give somebody a word to give to you to confirm. Yeah. Yeah. we got too many of this. These parking lot prophets, I, I call them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you can't prophesy in front of everybody, you need to just shut up. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. And, and so she didn't know. But here she is. And here, the, here comes this wild looking man up to her and says, what are you doing? I'm baking a cake. It's the last bit of meal we got. My son and I are going to eat. There's a drought in the land. We're going to eat and we're just going to sit back and we're just going to wait on death. Yes. And this wild looking man said, Feed me first, mm -hmm. and God will take care of you. That word he proclaimed demanded movement from her. Amen. Amen. One way or another, movement toward or movement away. When you hear the word preach, it will cause you to move toward or it will cause you to move away. But it does demand movement, 
And if you ever want to cross the line of the unknown, you'll have to have the word come to you and you'll have to go into places that you've never been before. Amen. 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 Peter had never Peter had never got out of a boat and walked on water. No, he hadn't. As much as he had been on the sea. Yeah. As many times as he had been fishing. Sure. Had never got out and tried to walk on water. Till Jesus said, Come. Peter got out and began to walk, didn't he? Yes, he yes, did. Now before we get before we get mad at, at St. Peter, I mean, uh, uh, someone gave me an idea about a book about this, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to write it after I get done with another one, but I, I've already got some notes on it. And, 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 and I can hear Peter say, what, uh, what, what did I do wrong? I mean, Peter began to sink, right? Yes. What did he do wrong? All he did was blink. He took his eyes off of Jesus. He just blinked. But the greater the blink, the greater the sink. Huh? He just blinked. But before we get mad at him, Peter didn't walk on water once. He walked on water twice. Because after Jesus picked him back up, they walked back to the boat. Ha! Hallelujah. He crossed the line of the unknown. God speaks to, speaks to us to cross the line of the unknown. Sometimes it's sometimes it's it's with our life. Sometimes it's with our money. Sometimes it's with our family. It's with our church. He calls us to cross the line of an unknown. It's called expanding your horizons. Go somewhere where you've never been before. Don't stay in an old mundane church religious spirit. Break out. Everybody say break out. Break out. Now, y'all can smile, and I won't have to labor nearly as much. But some of y'all look like you just drank a big old quart jar of pickle juice. Now, y'all clapped and carried on with the singing. You better get on board. Amen. Yeah, step out of the boat. I told someplace one time, they, they sang, and of course, I know y'all don't do this, but they sang and sang and sang and sang and sang and sang and sang. And I thought, oh my God, they're never going to quit singing. By the time they got done singing, everybody was ready to go home. And they got me up to preach. And I told somebody, I said, lock the door. Because if you all are going to endure what I just endured, then you're going to endure me, baby. Because half of them folk couldn't sing. And I had to sit there and listen to that mess. So I said, don't you leave me now. I stay through your mess. You stay through mine. <laughs> cross the line. Cross the line of the other. It demands us. Now, in order to cross that line, it's going to take a change of mind. Because one of the things that holds us back is our thinking. Amen. Come on. Yes, sir. It's our thinking. Yes. I call it stinking thinking. <laughs> we just got stinking thinking. Our thinking. Well, I hope so. Well, if it's the Lord's will. Now, I know, there, I know there's a passage of Scripture that talks about if it be the Lord's will. I understand that. I, I, I understand that totally. But how can you pray and say, well, I'll be at church if it's the Lord's will. Hold on. Yeah. It is the Lord's will. Yeah, well, I'll sing if it be the Lord's will. You got a gift, don't you? Amen. Uh, well, I'll preach if it's the Lord's will. And the creek don't rise. Well, yeah. <laughs> and the creek don't rise. Yeah, you got to put that in there. You got to put that in there. Huh? Huh? You got to put that in there. You got to, yeah, the creek don't rise. Yeah. Creek? No. No. It's creek where I come from. It's creek. It's creek. It's creek. I have never seen a spell C R I C K. It's C R E E K. Isn't that right? Creek. Creek. Still creek. You said creek. Yeah, you said creek. See? 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 Transfers of thought. She done got you pulled in, brother. It's creek around here, isn't it? See? She says so. Well, whether it's creek or creek, it's water. Can we agree on that? It's water. So if it's the Lord's will, the water don't rise. Well, what are you going to do if the water don't rise? Now, what are you going to do if it does rise? Well, you'll wait your way through it. I'll tell you one thing right now. You'll wait, you wait through water to go to Walmart now. <laughs> now, don't tell me. I'm the June wheel. She'll wait through water to get to Walmart. I know. 
You wait too hard to get your family. Would you wait too hard to get to church? Now you don't have to say a word. You don't have to say a word. You don't have to say a word. Hesitation was enough. Yes. Hallelujah. If I can get there from get here from there, I can get here from there. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, I know you were. That's why. I, that's why I brought all that up. And a mudslide. Yeah. Mudslide had us blocked in. More pants out. Yeah. Oh Lord. We were blocked out. Well, I didn't say nothing about it to be the Lord's will if the creek don't rise and the mud don't slide. <laughs> so if, you got, if you got a mud slide, you got a good reason. I guess. <laughs> it was a hard crowd tonight. A hard crowd tonight. Huh? Yeah, they was. They're killing me tonight. Maybe I picked the wrong message. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> then the next thing that the word causes us to do it will demand us to do things that are impossible wow huh? oh well I got a little bumper sticker who said oh well Me. I got a little bumper sticker out there that says it ain't nothing but a thing that's right. not thing thing <laughs> that's, a, that's a black word thing like yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it says and underneath it it says because with God all, all things, things are possible. Okay, if all things are possible, then when we, why do we bellyache when we get into impossible situations? That's true. Amen. That's true. Human nature. Huh? huh? Who That's said? Life. Someone said human nature. Who said that? Human nature. And we've been delivered from that, supposedly. Amen. That's right. Amen. All things become new, right? Huh? Right. Those who are in Christ, oh. old things have become, all things, all old things are passed away. Behold. How many things? Oh. How many things? Oh. Oh. All things except those things that we tied off that we didn't want God to have. Amen. 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 Yeah. 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 But God's looking for some folk that'll do the impossible. What's the impossible? Laying hands on the sick and watching them recover. Giving sight to the blind and hearing to the dead. Hallelujah. Causing the lame to walk and the dumb to talk. Do the impossible. Hallelujah. Do what you have no physical capability of doing. And you can stand and say, only God did it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's taking us into, the, into an area where, where, where we cannot take credit for anything that's right. been done. That's right. Amen. Amen. Right. Yes. What does this mean? It means when you do not have the natural ability to accomplish what needs to be accomplished. It's an area where you've got to rely totally on God's ability. It's an area where you transform your trouble into triumph. Hallelujah. It's an area where you quit Billy aching about having so much trouble and you start trying, you start talking victoriously. You quit grumbling about what's going on, how sick and how bad everything is, and you start talking about I'm an overcomer. No weapon for me this means a prosper. I'm the blessed of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The line of the impossible. The line of the impossible. God wants us to cross that. God wants to see what Israel was getting ready to take on was impossible for them. Even God said that. God said there's seven nations there that pound for pound, man for man, they're greater than you are. And your army will not and cannot match up to them physically. Yet, by my hand, ah, I'll take you through that land. God. We'll destroy the enemy together. How I many know you can't destroy him without God? Amen. You can't destroy your stuff without God. You can't destroy the flesh without God. You can't store, restore a, 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 a tore up mind without God. That's God. It's the area of the impossible. That area of the impossible, in order to, to go there and stay there and live there, you must rid yourself of all unbelief. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. One man said to the Lord, Lord, I believe, but help mine unbelief. Yes. Yes. Now, here's, here's what he said. He said, Lord, I know you can do it, but I don't know how to receive what you can do. Amen. That's what he meant. That's what he's saying. Yes, that's what he's saying. Get it now. I know you can do what you said you can do, but I don't know how to receive what you just said you can do. I know you can heal me, but I don't know how to get it. I know you can make me free, 
but I don't know how, you, how to get it. Can you teach me how to get what you got? Oh my God. If we could just learn to get what God's got. Somebody say amen. amen. The Bible said, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Oh, to get in there and to be able to search out his greatness and his majesty and his glory in his way. Hallelujah. And tap in to everything that God's got. Hallelujah. You cannot enter there with unbelief. Because unbelief will keep you from receiving. Amen. Amen. I said unbelief will keep you from receiving. Maybe so. No, that's unbelief. I hope so. No, that's unbelief. Come on. I know so. I know so. It will be done. It is being done. It has been done. Come on. Stand back and watch the hand of God begin to move. Let every man be a liar. But watch God's truth manifest itself in our Amen. Hallelujah. God wants us not only to go there, He wants us to live there. That's right. Huh? Canaan was not a place that Israel was visiting. Canaan was a place that they were going to establish to become theirs. Huh? You know, Israel has been, if you read the Bible and study out geographical locations, you'll find that where Baghdad is at, Israel is supposed to own that. That's right. That land belongs to Israel. Yes, it does. Uh -huh. and, and, and people can't figure out why we had to get rid of Saddam Hussein. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. Why did America have to do it? Because America was the only one that had guts enough to get it done. Amen. Huh? Now you'll have to you'll have to help me and you'll have to pray for me because I'm a veteran and I, I I fought for the red, white, and blue and I love my country and I tell you what I get upset every time I hear someone badmouth our troops being over there. There's a reason why they're there and we need to praise God that we've got young men and women that are willing to protect you and I so we can have church. Yeah. Freedom don't come free. Yeah, you're right, brother. Freedom doesn't come free. It costs something. It costs lives and it costs spilled blood. It costs stained soil. But thank God somebody went before us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But you got to get into the land of the unknown. The unknown. Now, 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 watch this. Once you get into the land of the unknown, and you begin to dwell there, you will then begin to understand the land of the unknown. Amen. Oh, let me give you an example. <laughs> remember when remember when Jesus uh, came across a blind man and Jesus spit on the ground yep. Yep. and he made mud and he put it on the man's eyes yep. and he told him to go wash himself. Uh -huh. Now that's a method. I preached about this, about methods the other day. That was a method that God used. Yeah. But why did Jesus do it that way? I think that's a valid question. Because I think it was more than just a method. Watch this. When Adam fell, God told Adam that from the ground it came, from the dust, right? And to the dust he shall return. Is that correct? And then he turned around and told Adam, the ground is cursed. And it'll rebel against you. Yeah. It's going to be hard to farm it. It'll uh -huh. be briars and thistles. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Cuckle bears, bears and all that kind of stuff. They stick to you when you walk through the field. Yeah. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. If the ground was cursed, then that means everything that came from the ground was cursed. Amen. See, we've been delivered from the curse of the law. Now, what was the, the, the curse was? Our flesh was cursed. Now, watch this. When Jesus saw that blind man, you ever notice when you get hungry, you salivate? Hmm? For you don't know what that is, your mouth gets full of spit. I saw some of that. That's those folks that came from the creek. 
That's a great not a exactly what You know what I'm talking about. Don't you? <laughs> I love her, man. I do. I do. When, and, and now, now watch this. When Jesus saw that blind man, he hungered. Hold on with me. He hungered to relieve that man of his blindness. Therefore, he salivated. He spit on the ground, which meant he mixed his essence with our curse. Oh, and the man received his sight. Oh. See, that's the way you and I get delivered. He mixes his essence with our curse. And delivers us from the curse. God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you get in the land of the unknown, you begin to, that stuff begins to unfold to you. And you begin to understand, wow, I don't really know where I'm at, but I love where I'm at. And I'm going to keep going where I'm at. Hallelujah. Woo. And all of a sudden, you don't get afraid of what's around the corner. Because you know God's looking around the corner for you. And he'll remind you what's around the corner. He'll warn you what's ahead. Hallelujah. And you'll not have to worry of any deadly thing. Whether it be poison or something biting you. It'll be all right. Because God's with you. The land of the unknown. The next place the word takes us is into an area of sacrifice. Mm. Sacrifice is giving up what you want to keep. Yeah, that's right. Huh? Oh yeah. Huh? Right. And and you've heard me say this several times. Folk will say, "Well, I just want to be delivered from my habit." But you know, just quit it. Just stop it. I mean, it's as simple as that. Just stop it. Well, it's not. It, it's difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. It was difficult to start it. But if you really want to sacrifice, huh? You'll stop it. Come on, someone say amen. amen. If you really, really want to sacrifice, you'll stop it. Because mm -hmm. true sacrifice is not giving your money to God, but giving yourself to God. Amen. True sacrifice is presenting your body. Paul said in Romans, he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. God said, I'm not asking something that's unreasonable. It is reasonable for you to present yourself to me, throw up both hands and say, here I am, Lord. Mold me and make me and fill me and send me. Do with me what you want to do, for I am no longer my own, but I belong to you. Living sacrifice. Living sacrifice, a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice. See, it, 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 it's difficult. Let me try to explain it this way, because and, and this sounds like kind of an oxymoron thing itself, but because it's difficult. I, I I love doing what I do, but I don't like being away from home. Amen. But yet, when I'm away from home doing what I'm doing, I have a great time. Does that make any sense? Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And I can only be home. I, can, I guarantee you, and I got a busy weekend coming up. I got a Bible college to start tomorrow night. Uh, and I got to teach two classes. I got to teach two classes Saturday morning at, beginning at 9 o'clock. I got to be in one city Sunday morning and another city Sunday night. And, and I got to be up early on Monday morning. So I got a heavy weekend ahead of me. But I can guarantee you, I'll be home a week and I'll be ready to hit the road again. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't because I don't love mama. And because I don't like being at home, it's because there's something inside of me that drives me and draws me. And it ain't about me. It's about you. It's about the family of God. It's about the kingdom of God. I'm not in this thing to get rich, but I am in this thing to make you rich. Hallelujah. Hey, I'll take it. I took, I took issue with the preacher just here a while back. And, 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 I, and I preach in, in several big churches. In, in, in Missouri, the, one, of the, one of the Bible colleges that I teach is, is in a huge church there in Missouri. And I'm, I'm the dean of the college there. And uh, uh, the pastor there, uh, I warned him the other day. I told him, I said, Pastor, you gotta, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about you. He said, what? I said, the company that you're starting to keep. We, every year we have a conference and we call it Teamwork Makes the Dream Work. He told me two years ago, he said, Doc, I'm going to start having it heavy hitters. I thought, well, what does that make me? <laughs> I don't have any heavy hitters. It's okay. 
So he had a man, and I'm not going to call him by name, but he had a man in last year and this year, had the, had the man in. Cost him over $15,000 to have him in oh my. for one service. And the man got up and bragged about how God had made him a multi-millionaire. And I'm like, Bubba, if you're a multi-millionaire, why ain't you giving to the church where they're taking from the church? If I didn't need it to live on, I would never receive an offering. But yet I know what Paul said. Paul didn't want an offering either. But Paul said the offering's not for my sake, it's for your sake. Because you can't be blessed if you don't give. And then Paul went on to say, don't get mad at me if I spend that offering on natural things. That's right. Amen. I was preaching revival one time and after service, I was in, a, I was in Dairy Queen getting an ice cream. A lady came up to me and said, how dare you? I said, what? what? She said, I am never going to give another dime into your ministry. I said, Lord, what's got in her crawl, you know? And uh, she said, I didn't give you that money for ice cream. I gave you that for that for the kingdom of God. I said, you don't understand, baby. i got to keep up my strength to carry on the kingdom of God. And I don't need your money anyhow. I almost, I almost wanted to put the ice cream cone in her face and say, here, you eat it. I didn't do it, but I thought about it. The thought did cross my mind. But then I had a vision of jail, so I decided I better not do that. I'll tell you, vi visions, will, visions will help you out in time of trouble. Baby. Yeah, they will. Uh -huh. Change my mind in a hurry. I said, thank you, Lord, that it was just a passing thought. <laughs> but the line of sacrifice, going into that area of sacrifice, sacrifice. I wonder how much of us in the kingdom of God are really sacrificing. Huh? Used to, we would fast and pray. Come on, don't get quiet on me now. That's true. That's we true. used to Amen. fast and pray. Amen. Now we pray fast. Amen. That's true. You stole my line, didn't you? Now we pray. You knew right where I was going. Now we pray fast. We used to stay until we prayed through. Now we're through praying. Yeah, that's true. Very true. Because we're watching the clock. I gotta get up in the morning. Kids got to go to school tomorrow. Well, see, you got to be too late in life. Because when, and, and when, when we went to church in the, in the 50s, when I was a kid, my grandfather farmed 350 acres. And, and, and Grandpa would, if we had revival, Grandpa would come in out of the field, no matter what condition it was in, and we went to church. And we stayed till it was over. Sometimes it would be 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Yep. Grandpa would get up at sunrise and get back in the field. I would get up at sunrise, milk cows, and go to church and go to school. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And we would do it for three and four weeks at a time. You can't even get folks together for three or four days at a time unless they get wore out. That's true. Very true. Very true. Well, don't look at me strange. Revival's world open, We're a so soft generation. A weaker generation. And we got our generation under us that we're going to lose if we don't get something going on here. Amen. Now, I'm tired of these churches being so, so strict on some things that we can't reach the youth of America. Amen. Oh, don't get quiet on me now. That's true. Amen. Amen. You may not like Christian hard rock, but I'm telling you, there's somebody that does, and that will reach somebody. You don't have to be the one to sing it, but somebody does. But don't point your finger at the one who does. Amen. Amen. Go right. Amen. God bless huh? you. Yeah. Huh? When I was pastoring in Indianapolis, first church I pastored, we were going to go down to Bedford, brother, to a Pentecostal campground. And I told the guys, that we're taking a youth down. And I told them, I said, guys, I'm telling you, I told the youth leader, I said, I'm telling you, they're not going to let y'all in. This was old time Pentecost. I said, they ain't going to let y'all in. I ain't gonna let y'all in. Some of the girls had shorts on. Some of the boys had long hair. Some of the boys had. Huh? No, they didn't have no skirts. No, they wouldn't have went with me if they had skirts on. Some, some of the boys had tattoos. I said, they, they, they ain't gonna let y'all in. I'm just telling you that right now. Oh, yeah, they will, yeah, they will, yeah, they will. Got down there and they pulled me off to the side. They said, Pastor, we can't let that one in, that one in, that one in, that one in, that one in. 
I said, you don't understand. That one's lost, that one's lost, that one's lost, that one's lost. They had a tent set up with a barber there and said the boys could stand there and go get a haircut and the girls could stand there and go back to the bathroom and change clothes. Sounds right. Yeah. I remember. And the kids that they were that, that, that they turned away were the kids that need to be saved. Yes. And because of stupid, ignorant thinking and tradition. Stinking thinking. Stinking thinking, they got turned away. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like to never got those kids in church. But I, we finally did. But like the and then, and they said, but Pastor Ball, like I don't understand why they turned us away. Now what am I gonna say? I'll tell you what I said. Well, you just look at them. Some preachers are ignorant. I said, some Christians are stupid. They just don't know no better. They got saved and they forgot where they came from. Because the church I came out of, you couldn't have any facial hair. I couldn't dress like this and preach. Oh, God, no. I'd be going to hell. But I'd be going to hell in style. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to tell you what got me delivered from that mess. I was, I was, I was an associate pastor, and, and the pastor was just, he hounded on that stuff all the time. I mean, preached on that mess all the time. So it was in July up in Indianapolis, it was a hot summer day, and we were having a cookout, church cookout. So I, I, I did the part, man, I had all my slacks, and had, had, they weren't tight fitting, had all my slacks. <laughs> had on my long sleeve white shirt, 90 degrees outside. Playing a part, man. I'm a preacher of the gospel. I showed up, walked into the pastor's house, and he's standing in the kitchen. He has on a pair of shorts, Bermuda shorts, has on a pair of flip-flops. Now, back then, they called them thongs. You can't call them thongs no more. So if I said he had on a pair of thongs, y'all would have went, what? But he had on a pair of flip-flops. And he had on a he had on a he had on a tank top. They call them wife beaters now. Now I don't know why they call them wife beaters. They want to beat their wife needs to be beat silly. But anyhow. But that's the way he was dressed. And I walked in on him, I'm thinking, oh my God. That's the pastor. And he said, he told his wife, he said, Oh, I, I gotta, I'm gonna, before anyone else gets here, he said, Micah, just excuse me. He opened up a drawer in the kitchen and he pulled out a pack of palm olives. And he lit him a cigarette. Oh. I said to myself, Self, get out. get out of here. When I get home, I'm going to redress. Because somebody been telling me a lie. And I'm going to seek God and see what God says about this thing. And God told me, as long as you're decent, you're all right, son. Right. Absolutely. People get bound up with stuff. But man, when you start going into the land of the unknown and you start and you start going into the land of sacrifice, you begin to find out that the what's this? The more you sacrifice, the more freedom you gain in God. Yes, yes, Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just as our country came by sacrifice, our freedom came by sacrifice, yes. so does freedom in the kingdom. Absolutely. And the sacrifice is shedding off the flesh, yes. trimming off the flesh, uh -huh. circumcising the heart. Yes. When Israel went into the land of Canaan, they had to be circumcised for the second time. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. That's uh -huh. right. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Can you think about, I mean, man. Woo! No, I don't want to think about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There are some old boys in the there's some old boys in the Bible that got mad because because the the the, 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 the enemy had slept with their sister. Yep. Yes. They got all mad about it. So they went in to fool the enemy. They said, here's what we're gonna do. Let's go in and we'll tell them since they had an affair with our sister, they gotta become part of Israel. Yep. And in order to be part of Israel, you gotta be circumcised. So they went in there and circumcised all those men. Now, now back then they didn't use knives; they used two rocks. Oh, my. Ooh, Jesus! <laughs> if I get through this or not? I felt it. Felt tremendous pain. Uh, 
And now watch this. So they circumcised all those guys. And the Bible says while they were sore. Three days. Three days. While they were sore. Them old brothers went in and killed everybody. See, they wouldn't fit the fight. No. Mm. Now that ain't why God circumcises us. So we won't be fit to fight. God circumcised us so we will be fit to fight. And it's a circumcision of the heart. It's a changing of the heart. Hallelujah. It's a, it's a, it's a qualitative change. Amen. Amen. Okay. So the line of sacrifice. He wants us to take. He wants us to cross that line of, 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 of sacrifice. Next, he wants us to go in. The, the word demands us, as it's proclaimed, to get out of our tradition. Amen. Well, that's the way. We, how, how come you? How come you do it that way? I don't know. That's just the way we've always done it. Yeah, Grandma did it that way. That's just the way we've done it. You know, I don't know why, but there ain't no need in changing it now. You know, a lot of folk don't like change when it comes to church. But now I do. I like change. Amen. Now, now for you. That say you don't like changing church. Let me ask you this. If you don't like change, what? I used to hear them say, all right, well, back to them good old days. I want to know something. <laughs> what was so good about the good old days? When you had to take your 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 clothes down to the creek. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> With a rock in the washboard. <laughs> what was so what was so great about that? Watch out for Indians. I remember when my grandma, and watch out for the Indians, is that what you said? Oh, Jesus. The Indians. Well, that's not politically correct. Native Americans, we had to watch I remember when grandma got her first ring of worship. Oh, man. We were uptown. The reason I remember is because I got my hand caught in the ring. Anybody here got your hand caught in the ring? I got and then, a star we moved, right there. then we moved uptown when we yeah. got twin tubs. My pop loose. Yeah. Uh, safety yeah. thing. And, and then we'd hang coffee. clothes out on the line. And this was a family right. ordeal. We'd hang clothes out on the line, get them dry. Grandma would bring them in the house, sprinkle them, and get them wet. Roll them up and put them in the refrigerator. <laughs> and ironed everything. Socks. Ironed everything. Socks, drawers. Everything. everything, and you had to really, you had to really be really good on hygiene because everything was hung on the line. See, yeah. <laughs> 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 now I want to know what was so good about the good old days. Because we like it when we got the ringer washer, then we like it when we got the automatic washer. Wow! Hey, diapers out on line, they freeze. Uh, diapers out? Yes, yes. I think they've done that. I, well, I did that. We did that with our firstborn. Uh huh. Uh, yo, yeah. Didn't have pampers. That's right. Because none of us knew how to be pampered. That's right. Huh? That's right. I always hate to go into the outhouse. Oh, going to the... I hated that, too, because there was always a black snake that was around that place. I hated that. I was always having this vision of what would happen if you were sitting down and something bit you. I'm like, oh, my God, it's a snake. Yeah. I'm scared of snakes. Now, I'm going to tell you what right now. I don't like them either. I'm scared of snakes. I'll kill them. I don't, 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 don't even tease me with a rubber snake. No siree, Bob. I'm saved, but I'll be lost for a few minutes if you tease me with a rubber snake. I'm just telling you. <laughs> the line of tradition, and, and we get so caught up with things, and and, and 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 we got out of the horse and buggy. I remember Grandpa pounding the fields with horses. Yeah. We got out, we got out, we got out of the horse and buggy age. We got into the car, and and, and, and man, we loved our cars. And didn't even have any air conditioning. Oh no. But man, we loved it. No, we didn't have air conditioning. Man, I remember when we got our first TV. It was a round screen, yeah. Admiral. Little TV thing. Yeah. 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 Just, 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 just the little round screen. And we used to go out in the summertime because it was too hot to sit in the house. We'd, go out, we'd, we'd turn it around at the window and we'd go outside and sit on the porch and watch TV. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, there wasn't much on. Amos and Andy. Kukla uh, Fran and Ollie. Ah, yeah. Uh, Kukla Fran and Ollie. Yeah. <laughs> Lawrence Wilk. My grandmother loved Lawrence Wilk, man. Bubbles going everywhere. <laughs> but, man, we loved it. Mexico <laughs> Star Theater. But, uh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And man, we had, Lord, we had Hopper and Cassidy, Gene Hawkins. Wow, 
Cisco. Roy Rogers, Cisco kid. Yeah, Poncho. Yeah, Poncho. Hey, Cisco. Hey, Poncho. Yeah. See, some of you don't even know. Red, little Beaver and Red Rider. You betcha, Red Rider. You betcha, Red Rider. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, sir. <laughs> Early, yeah. early. Uh, Buck Rogers. Watch, watch the uh, test pattern. Yeah, <laughs> see, we watch test pattern. No, 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 think about it. Now, some of you, some of us are so spoiled now that if we ain't got our 60-inch TV in front of us, watch it, brother. <laughs> yeah, that's what I got. Is that what you got, 60? No, not quite. Almost. I got a 60. I got a big old 60 big screen, man. Huh? Here's a what? 53? You want to get a bigger one? Yeah, but see, mine's obsolete because it's still the, it's not the trail. It's ours is. It's obsolete. It's time to get a new one. It's time to get a new one. That's why I keep telling Julie. She said that was just fine. That's what you're right. That's just fine. That's just fine. I said, but baby, think about a streamline. If we got that big old bulky thing out of here, put that streamline up, we'd have a whole lot more room. She said, more room to clean. <laughs> I'm getting voted down, brother. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Now, what my point to all this madness is this. We like progressing everywhere else. Why can't we progress? No, I ain't going to tell her that. <laughs> I heard that. I ain't going to do that. I do my share of cleaning. But, 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 but we like progress that way. But a lot of us don't like progress spiritually. Because it gets us out of our traditions. Which gets us out of our comfort zone. Yeah, comfort zone. Huh? And most of us, now not, not all of us, but most Christians that I run, that I come in contact with over the years cannot really tell you why church does what they do. I mean, for an example, why do we sing first? That's why it's always been done. <laughs> Clear the air. Why do we sing first? To praise the Lord. Worship Him. Why do we take why do we take well why don't we do that last? Why don't we, we get can. the word first and then rejoice over the word? Everybody gets cards. Thank I mean, what if we just what if we just shuffle things around one, one time and said, well, we're going to preach first, then we're going to sing later. Yeah. I had a song leader up in Frankfort, Indiana. And he'd come in and he'd do he'd do the he'd do the singing, and then right after the singing was over, he'd cut out. I said, This ain't gonna work. He wouldn't stay for the message. I said, This ain't gonna work. So he come in one Sunday morning and they were he got the he got the praise team all together and they was off praying and everything and they got up there on the platform man they were ready to go. We were, we had a church of about three hundred and fifty then and they, they were ready to go. I looked out around them I said y'all go take a seat I'm gonna preach first we're gonna sing later. <laughs> and then if you don't take the offering up at the right time there's someone out there saying you forgot the offering. I didn't I didn't forget it we're just gonna do it at a different time. You understand what I'm saying? We get so comfortable in the area that we're in. But I'm going to tell you something. If we start following the Word, the Word will demand you out of your comfort zone. It'll demand you out of your tradition. It'll demand you out of your religiosity. Now, if you don't believe that, take a weekend. Not a weekend. Take a Saturday. Because come back from church on Sunday. Take a Saturday. And come down to Popper Rub, Missouri and sit in some of my classes and ask my students about how they, how they found out how religious they were. When they started sitting in class, mm. uh. I asked him one time. Most of you have heard this, but I asked him one time. I said, "How many believe you can that you can be baptized in the Holy Ghost and speak in English?" And none of them believed it. I said, "You mean to tell me you don't believe the Holy Ghost can speak English?" Oh, he speaks in other tongue. I saw. Him. So if you're in Africa, if you're in Africa and you lay hands on somebody and they speak in English, what would you think? And the majority said, I would think that a missionary's been there and taught them English. I thought, man, I'm going to tell you something right now. Y'all are dumb in a box of rocks. You need to be in this class. Then I said, have you ever noticed this? I don't care how country you are or how, how, how sophisticated you are. When you go to give an interpretation of tongues, it's always in the king's English. Yay, henceforth, therefore, whither to? And you know you don't talk that way. I said, do you think that's the only way God can talk? Most of them said, yeah. I said, well, what if God sent a man, man of God down into the ghetto? And he walked up to a man in the ghetto. And he said, yo, bro. What's happening? Yo, bro. You need to bust a move from 
your old bad self and come unto me. And they said, oh, God would never speak that way. I said, really? And one lady said, because God's holy. I said, man, what did I say that was unholy? I said, y'all study. Three weeks later, she came back and she said, I, Dr. Baldock, I was full of religious spirits. I didn't know it. I was full of tradition, and I didn't know it. I said, yeah, tradition puts God in a box. Okay, last but not certainly not least, when you hear the Word of God, you're going to have to resist the pull to return to old ways and old habits. Because let me, let me share something with you. When you, get in, when you get in trouble, or you're in a situation or a circumstance that's bad, you will revert to what you have the most trust in. Yes. Right. If it's your own strength, your own knowledge, whatever, you'll, you'll go to that uh -huh. when, you, when your back's against the wall. Amen. Isn't that the truth? Huh? Right. We've got to have, we got to resist the pull to return to the flesh. Hallelujah. It's a pull. Israel faced that pull all the time. Remember? Every time something would happen. Well, we should have never left Egypt. Yeah, we should have never left and everybody knows it's always the pastor's fault. Yeah. Always. That's absolutely right. It's always the pastor's fault. <laughs> well, we were all right till Moses came around. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Why was it? How, how come you all were crying? Because God, God sent Moses because he heard you cry. Amen. Huh? You all were in trouble. God heard you cry. God brought you. He put a man of God over you. And you still want to eat garlic and onions. Yeah. That's what Israel wanted to do. Said. They said at least if we died in Egypt, we'd have a graveyard. Yeah. Uh -huh. The pull to return. Yeah. The pull to return. Now, I don't know about you. I've gone too far now. I don't have much pull to return. Huh? I don't want to return to alcohol. I don't want to return to drugs. I don't, I don't want to return to that stuff. But I don't want to return to the old traditional church either. That's right. I agree with that. No, amen. I don't. No, I don't. No, I no, I no, I no, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. Because I found out women can wear earrings and it's okay. Absolutely. Back in the old church, they used to say, I know sisters get I know sisters say those holes are healing up in her earlobes. What? What? Your bones are gone. Yeah. Yeah. Their hair is growing. Lord, sharing your ear. Lord, <laughs> Ain't got no lipstick on. Well, now, I'll tell you what right now. I've seen some folk that needed lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> Present company excluded, of course. Uh, John Osteen said one time, even an old bar needs a gold oh, paint. Oh. <laughs> I agree with John. <laughs> old, old bar. <laughs> pull to return. Oh, pull to return. So every time, I want you to remember, every time the words preached are taught, are sang, it's pulling you. It's making demands of you. Yes. It's wanting movement out of you. Hallelujah. Now, the movement you make is not up to God. It's up to you. Amen. It's up to you. That's right. You can go for it or you can go run back. from it. Well, you can go back. One or the other. One or the other. Okay. Only two that. choices. Amen. 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 So now all of the word that we say we've enjoyed this week, I want to leave you with this. What are you going to do with it? Grow up higher. That's the movement. To the street. See? Yeah. The movement. The movement. I know what you ought to do with it. I have confidence in you. There's movement. There's movement. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 There's some of you here tonight that are really faced with some situations. But I'm telling you, if you'll just quit trying to work it out yourself and give it to God, it'll be all right. Amen. Some of you are worrying about some stuff that you can't fix anyway. And you might as well let go of it and let God take care of it. Amen. 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 Ain't, no sense in, ain't no sense in fighting it. Just let God, just let God take care of it. Yes, Lord. Well, Brother Mike, is it really that easy? Well, it's, it, it's, 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 it's really, it really is that easy to make that decision. Now, 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 there's some stuff involved to hang in there. But like the old saying, action speaks louder than words. That's Amen. Right. Amen. 
And God's looking for some action. Can you say amen? Amen. Stand with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you tonight.